January the 4th, 1860, Bath. My dear Darwin, I have read your interesting book with all carefulness as you enjoin, have gleaned a great deal from it, and consider it one of the most valuable contributions to natural history literature of the present day. Perhaps you may like to know what I think of your particular theory, though you will doubtless have many opinions offered far more deserving to be weighed than mine. As you are aware, I am no stickler for the multitude of so-called species created by so many naturalists of late years, and I have always thought the time was not distant when, after the brain-splitting process had been carried to its utmost length, some at least could see the necessity of retracing their steps, and again uniting a large number of the forms that they had so carefully separated. But I frankly confess I did not look for any such large assemblages of species to be brought together in this way, as the descendants from one and the same stock, similar to what you have attempted in your volume. By this you will see that I embrace your theory in part, but hardly to the full extent to which you carry it. Still, I allow you to have made out a very strong case, and I will not pretend to say what future researches in the same direction may not ultimately establish. One great difficulty to my mind in the way of your theory is the fact of the existence of man. I was beginning to think you had entirely passed over this question, till almost the last page I find you saying that light will be thrown on the origin of man and his history. By this, I suppose, is meant that he is to be considered a modified and no doubt greatly improved orang. <laughs> I doubt if this will find acceptance with the generality of readers. I am not one of those in the habit of mixing up questions of science and scripture, but I can hardly see what sense or meaning is to be attached to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, and yet more to verses 21 and 22 of the same chapter, giving an account of the creation of woman, if the human species at least has not been created independently of other animals, but merely come into the world by ordinary descent from previously existing races whatever those races may be supposed to have been. Neither can I easily bring myself to the idea that man's reasoning faculties, and above all his moral sense, could ever have been obtained from irrational progenitors by mere natural selection, acting however gradually and for whatever length of time that may be required. This seems to be doing away altogether with the divine image which forms the insurmountable distinction between man and brutes. Believe me, my dear Darwin, yours very sincerely, Leonard James. Down House, Bromley, Kent, January the 7th, 1860. My dear James, I am very much obliged for your letter. It is of great use and interest to me to know what impression my book produces on philosophical and instructed minds. I thank you for the kind things which you say, and you go with me much further than I expected. You will think it presumptuous, but I am convinced, if circumstances lead you to keep the subject in mind, that you will go further. No one has yet cast doubt on my explanation of the subordination of group to group, on homologies, embryology, and rudimentary organs. And if my explanation of these classes of facts be at all right, whole classes of organic beings must be included in our line of descent. The imperfection of the geological record is one of the greatest difficulties. And by the way, Lael, who is convert, does not think I have exaggerated imperfection. During the earliest period, the record would be most imperfect, and this seems to me sufficiently 
to account for not finding intermediate forms between the classes in the same great kingdoms. It was certainly rash in me putting in my belief of probability of all beings having descended from one primordial form, but as this seems yet to me probable, I am not willing to strike it out. Huxley alone supports me in this, and something could be said in its favour. With respect to man, I am very much wishing to obtrude my belief, but I thought it dishonest to quite conceal my opinion. Of course, it is open to everyone to believe that man appeared by separate miracle, although I do not myself see the necessity or probability. Pray accept my sincere thanks for your kind note. Your going some way with me gives me great confidence that I am not very wrong. For a very long time I halted halfway, but I do not believe that any inquiring mind will rest halfway. People will have to reject all or admit all. By all I mean only the members of each great kingdom. My dear James, yours most sincerely, Charles Darwin. Thank you.